let the restoration begin. You know, I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to take on restoring this 190E 2.6. The very first thing I was going to have to deal with were the pulsating ABS brakes because they were literally driving me crazy anytime I would drive the car. This was particularly showing up at low speed when you'd roll to a stop and hit the brake pedal and you'd feel that brake pedal pulsate and the car shake as you came to a stop. Now you can recognize a car with ABS brakes and old bends because they all have an ABS unit that looks similar to this one here. And there are a number of things that can happen to cause that particular situation. You could have water or air in the brake fluid. You could have faulty problems with your brake rotors and brake pads. You could have sensor issues. Maybe the sensors are dirty. Or you could have a problem with the wiring in the system or the ABS module or the ABS brake unit itself. The important thing to remember when you're troubleshooting a problem like this is don't run out and buy a bunch of new parts until you've diagnosed the problem. So what I did is I started out with the simplest thing first. I already knew that the brake fluid hadn't been changed for over two years, so I wanted to do that first. And I set up the car, pulled the wheels off. We used the suction method to pull all the old fluid out of the system and to put new fluid in while we were doing that. Important thing to remember anytime you're doing a brake fluid change with an ABS car is don't let any air get into the system. That makes it very hard to deal with if you do that. For further information about brake fluid changes, you can visit my website. I've written a manual on how to do this properly on a 190E. Now, one thing showed up while I was doing the brake fluid flush and I noticed that the brake rotors looked a little worn. And upon further inspection, as you can see here, there was hardly any pad width left. And I kind of felt like, man, I should go ahead and change uh, those brake rotors and pads. But I really wanted to find out if the brake fluid flush did anything to change the problem. So we put the wheels back on, rolled it out of the shop, drove the car, and immediately I knew that the brake fluid flush did not fix this particular problem. So we've rolled the car back in here to the shop, removed all the wheels, and now we're going to change the rotors, the pads, and the flexible brake hoses. Let's take a closer look at this, and when we're done, we'll be able to test drive the car again. The first thing I noticed was the excessive amount of wear in these rotors. You can tell that by how deep this outer lip has worn. If I put my fingers on both sides of the rotor, I can tell that this rotor has a combined wear of over an eighth of an inch. So these rotors are probably worn below specifications. And then looking down in here, I notice that the, <laughs> the pads are only about an eighth of an inch thick. So between the worn rotors and the excessively worn pads, we have a, probably have an issue where the caliper is trying to push those pads down against the rotor and they're not making proper contact. We're talking too much travel here. That may be causing a feedback issue back into the ABS. Uh, so I'm hoping that this might fix the problem. The other thing is I'm looking at these rubber brake hoses and you've heard me say this before and I preach it all the time, change these things. If they're over 20 years old, always, and I repeat, always change the rubber flexible brake hoses anytime you're doing any brake work on your car. Now, I'm going to get these parts off the car, onto the bench, and let you take a closer look at what I find. I thought it'd be good to show you a few tips that I use when working around these brake rotors and calipers. Uh, what I like about the 201 and 124 chassis is you can pull the front rotor without having to remove the whole hub like you did on the older models. And there's a, there's a screw here that you remove once you've re removed the caliper here and, and hung it, you can just uh, remove the rotor. They usually come off, the front ones anyway, come off quite easily, but not the case with the rear ones. So I'm gonna take you back and show you sometimes what you have to do to get those rear uh, rotors off that rear hub. Sometimes they, they tend to seize because of moisture and rust. Well, you can't hear me very well but you always want to wear a dust mask like this when you're working around these, these brake systems. You do not want to be breathing that dust. Let me start by showing you the rear rotor. 
Um, it doesn't have that bad a lip on it, but it is badly scored. You look at the uh, rear pads themselves, oh, there's, there's still plenty of life in the rear pads. So I don't believe the rear brakes were the problem, but that's a whole different story when you take a close look at these front rotors. Look at the scoring on the back side as well as the grooving right in here. And if I tip this rotor, I hope you can see the depth of the groove at the edge there. And then looking at these pads, they're telling an interesting story. You have a lot of burning and glazing on these front pads. They're extremely worn down. And that could be one of the key indications that our ABS brake problem might be related to these front brakes. In preparation for installing the new parts, there are a couple things that you'll need to do. Number one, you want to thoroughly clean these new rotors. They come with an oily film on them, and if you install them with an oil film on them, it will affect the performance of the new pads. I found that just by cleaning these in hot soapy water is an excellent way to clean them, and you can dry them off and they're ready to install. The other thing I do is I clean the whole hub backing plate assembly and on the rear brakes that would include the emergency brake assembly. Just get some hot soapy water in a large dish pan and set it underneath the uh, suspension and then use a brush and just wash through that area and let all that dust and crud fall down into the hot water and then you can just let it air dry. At that point, um, there's one other thing that you should do. This is missed a lot and it's very important, and that's to clean the face of this hub. Uh, you'll note in this picture here, they get very rusty and they'll actually affect the way the new rotor seats on the hub when you go to install it. And that could actually give you high speed brake chatter. So I use a Scotch-Brite attachment on, the, on an air drill, as you see here, and go ahead and clean that. If you don't have an air drill, you can just get some Scotch-Brite pads and work and rub away at this until you remove all the rust and crud from this hub. Now we're going to go ahead and install all the new parts. We'll put the wheels back on this car and uh, we'll take you on a test drive to see if this solved the ABS pulsation problem. Wow, what a difference. I can't believe it. When I used to roll in here and hit the brakes, it'd just be jumping all over the place. And I went out on the road and gave us some really hard braking, and I was getting smooth, steady brakes this time. But when I roll back in here, right before a stop, I'm just getting a little bit of pedal chatter. So there may be something else I can do that can improve this. I'm looking for 100% here. So we're gonna roll this thing back in the shop, get it up in the air, and I'll show you another thing that you should check if you have one of these cars with ABS brakes. You're looking at the front ABS sensor in my 190E. There are three of them on this car, one on each of the front wheels in this location here and one in the rear differential. If these sensors or the sensor wires are not working properly, not giving correct feedback into the ECU, then you will have braking problems as I have been experiencing on this 190E. So I'm going to take my uh, six millimeter Allen going on each, each side here and I'll remove these sensors and we'll take a look at them. You do not need to remove the wheel to get this sensor out. So I'm showing you the other side here. Uh, I've removed the bolts and I'm going to just slide the sensor right out of the hub and take a look at that. Look at the amount of crud that's built up on the end of that sensor. You may be surprised to learn that that sensor is magnetic and any of those metallic brake particles over time will stick to the sensor and if it gets dirty enough, it can give a false reading. So we're gonna clean these off and clean off the inside of the sensor hole. We'll mount them back on and then we'll go back and check that rear one. Then we'll give it another test drive. After inspecting the wire for damage, I removed the single bolt that's holding this sensor into the rear differential. These can be a little tricky to get out. I use a very thin pry tool. You'll need to get in there and, and work those things out very carefully. A couple things I noticed right away after I removed it. First, there was a little bit of metallic particles here on the tip, but look at this broken O-ring. Um, that's interesting. I noticed a little wetness here, and of course there's wetness around my 
rear differential. So I'm hoping that uh, replacing that O-ring will solve some of that uh, rear end leak problem I'm looking at. We're going to install the new O-ring, clean this up, uh, put them back in. Be sure and use Loctite or thread locker when you're putting the new bolts in. And we'll uh, wrap everything up and take this out for another test drive. I've driven the car a bit, kind of worked the, the pads to seat them into the rotors, and now I'm going to give it the test. Uh, starting at 50 miles an hour, I'll give it heavy pressure and then back it off as I come to a stop. Wow, what a difference. If you would have been in this car before, it would roll to a stop and go and shake and chatter. So now we're going to head on back to the shop. We'll wrap this video up and I want to point out a few cautions and a few other tips that you might want to use when you're working on your own car's ABS brakes. Well that solves my ABS problems, at least for the time being on my 190E. In conclusion, there's a couple other things I want to mention to you if you're working on your own ABS brakes. If and when you clean those front sensors, be very careful not to do anything that would put static electricity into them. Don't use compressed air to clean the sensor tip itself. Uh, use a nylon brush and some brake cleaner. When you get down in that hole to clean those teeth in that rotor wheel, you can go ahead and use compressed air there. And then when you put them back, back on, don't do a lot of twisting and bending on that wire. Just be a little gentle on those sensors. And if you put it back in and the ABS light comes back on, you may not have cleaned them well enough. I've had a couple times where I've had to take them out again and clean them a second time. And now you're saying, well, Kent, I did all this and my brakes still aren't working or my ABS light's on. One of the things you have to know about that ABS light, the ABS light comes on if there's a problem, usually with some sort of electrical connection. Either it's not picking up a sensor a speed indication to the ECU or there's a break in a wire somewhere. I found in the past most ABS brake simple problems can be solved by either a brake fluid flush, uh, replacing rotors and pads, and cleaning those sensor wires. The next step would be to maybe replace particularly the front sensors and then you're into the ECU and the modulator unit. You don't even want to think about buying those particularly new. So if you're continuing to have problems, you can't get that ABS brake light to come off, I recommend you take it to a good brake shop and have them thoroughly test your system and diagnose it so that you don't end up throwing money at the problem.